hi guys welcome back to my channel today in this video i'm going to be sharing how much i spend a month living in edmonton alberta so edmonton is definitely one of the more affordable cities in canada and we definitely have more affordable house prices compared to provinces like british columbia and ontario and i think the average cost of living for a single person in edmonton including rent is about two thousand nine hundred dollars which is reasonable compared compared to the cost of living in other provinces so i know the advantages of living in edmonton however i wasn't seeing those benefits in my bank account so i was like what's the problem what's the problem right so i had to do a, like a bit of retrospective and just review my spending and i realized that i actually was wasting thousands of dollars because i wasn't tracking my expenses regularly so i did a, um, a retrospective video for 2022 and i'll link that video and somewhere in this video so in that video i was talking about the goals i had for 2022 and what i could have done better and what was the roadblocks that i faced in 2022 one of the improvements that i noted from that video was that i wasn't tracking my expenses more regularly and as a, as a result of that, in 2023, I made like a deliberate effort to track my expenses regularly. And I've seen so much improvement in my spending. I've saved thousands of dollars and I've even improved my credit score just by tracking my expenses weekly. So today in this video, I'll be sharing with you my spending breakdown and some of the tips and strategies that I use to up my spending and increase my savings so let's get into this video one of the things i learned from my 2022 review was that i needed a system to achieve my financial goals and i made sure to implement a system so right now i created um, a budgeting template i use in google sheets to track my expenses weekly sometimes even bi-weekly i use this in combination with the app called mint and mint is a really great app and you can use it to track all your expenses so you, when you connect your credit card, your debit card, and any other um, accounts you have, you can see all your transactions all in one place. I think that, that makes it easier to track your expenses and even export the, your data into like Excel sheets or Google sheets for like further analysis. So that is the template that I created. And let me know in the comments if you would like me to share um, a link to this um, budgeting template and it's definitely free for anyone that is interested as well. So the first thing I did using the budgeting template I created was to identify what my fixed expenses are. And this will just help you to differentiate what's between a need and a want and therefore help you to reduce your amount of consumer spending. So for me, I identified my fixed expenses to include my rent, my utility bill, uh, my car insurance, my gym bill, as well as my phone bill. So these are um, payments that I can't avoid and they are reoccurring, usually monthly. And once I identified this amount and I found that my total came to about $1,200 of fixed expenses, then I was able to identify what amount of money do I have left to um, spend like on other things that are not necessarily like necessities for me. So once I identified my fixed expenses, I also identified some recurring subscriptions, monthly subscriptions like Netflix, Audible, YouTube Premium, and things like that. And I found that it came to a total of $100 per month. And looking back, that is definitely a high amount for monthly subscriptions. So I definitely um, took the opportunity to like curb and just cut off some subscriptions. But I'll talk about that later in my um, summary section of this video. So once I identify all my fixed expenses and my monthly subscriptions, I first put away my savings. I think it's really important to have this principle of savings first. So most people, they save last. Once they pay like their rent, their insurance, and once they like spend on themselves, they're like, okay, I'm going to save after this. But actually, it's much more effective to save first before you spend money on yourself and spend money on other things. So what I recently started doing is that I put away money in a different account. So that can be my TFSA or it can be my RRSP. Um, I usually contribute to my RRSP. I contribute about five, I, I believe five, six percent every single month of my, in, every, five to six percent of my income every single month to my RRSP. Then I also have my TFSA, which is my tax-free savings account. I send about maybe like 
a thousand dollars every month or so to my tfsa and this just helps me to save money because i find that if i don't do that first i find that there's no money to save at the end of the month there's a law called parkinson's law and it actually says that work expands based on the amount of time available for that work so like for example like if you are someone that um, create work blocks for yourself like you you box yourself like for example okay I'm going to finish editing this video in one hour you find yourself stretching yourself and like kind of like improving your capabilities so that's the same thing with money like when you decide okay I'm going to spend less I'm going to live on less at first it may look daunting but once you you create that opportunity to stretch your capability then you see like you're saving more money like you're spending less time on tasks and that's pretty much how i learned to save more money and that's what i'll be doing moving forward as well so next i'll be breaking through my um consumer spending categories and i feel like this is really important for me to see myself just like being like just like seeing the numbers for myself and realizing oh this is how much i spend on like amazon or whatever and just making mental notes to curb this spending or just like make changes that will reduce the amount of money I'm like allocating to these areas in my um, budget. So as you can see here, this is a pie chart of my consumer spending on average every single month. The top spending category for me is the miscantilene miscantilineous section. And is that essentially the section of like things that you can't categorize, like the most random things. And like, I'm sad to say it, but like that's my highest spending sector, which is not good because you you need to be able to track and like identify where your money is going so like i believe these expenses are mainly like amazon spending clothing spending um maybe like buying devices or like buying like digital devices or things like that and i was looking through my um budget tracking template and i realized that i spend quite a lot on amazon every single month like you never know how much like those amazon like purchases like pile up and it's actually really high and like moving forward i'm deleting the amazon app from my phone because I've, i'm spending way too much money on amazon so the next um top sector is food and this makes about 28 percent of my consumer spending and i think this is really high um so my goal initially was to spend about 500 dollars on groceries every single month but somehow i'm usually over that target and i think that's because um i usually go out maybe two to three times per month to eat and i think this is something that i'm going to like reduce to at least one or two times per month and i think the key is isn't to like cold turkey like cancel things from your spending but it's to like slowly like kind of like kill them out for example if you order uber eats like five times a month like you can try to target okay i'll only order uber eats three times a month and from three you can go to two then one day then you can even end up like not even ordering food for the whole single month for the whole month so that's kind of what i'm trying to achieve so the next section of my spending is my giving and this makes 23 percent of my consumer spending and this mainly includes like tithes and also um tithes and birthday presents i am someone that i believe in the principle of giving the bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive so i'm trying to like tap into that and also like i also believe in the principle of tithing is a biblical principle and tithing is essentially giving away 10 percent of your income to god so you can give it by um by donations to churches and that is something that i believe in as well so that is something that is non-negotiable for me a few other sections is beauty upkeep which makes about seven percent of my spending and this is like makeup buying makeup um doing my nails and getting my hair done shredding waxing things like that i think this is a really good number um in terms of like um compared to other categories so the next um section is car expenses so i recently got a car sometime late last year and so i i spend on average about 90 dollars on gas every single month and i also pay parking sometimes so just these are some expenses to keep in mind if you're looking to buy a car very soon the expenses can definitely pile up as well so make sure you 
kind of do some estimation before you buy a car so the next section is my essentials and these are like my toiletries and house supplies and this is a very small percentage the last section is my learning which is mainly audible um, audiobook purchases so yeah so this is kind of like my spending breakdown so like i said before most of my money goes to the miscantilinear section which is not good so moving forward i'm definitely taking steps to reduce my amount of spending in that section so the first thing i'm doing like i said before is my savings first principle where where i automatically send a percentage of a percentage of my income into my savings accounts my rrsp or tfsa so the next thing that i'm going to be doing i'm going to be curbing some of my subscriptions so i have an audible subscription youtube premium subscription and i definitely think um, i can do away with some of these subscriptions the thing about subscriptions is that you can literally be paying for like 10 20 different subscriptions and you have no idea you will literally just be seeing the money leaving your account so make sure like you go through all your subscriptions like if you made subscriptions on all these like websites that don't necessarily give you visibility to your um, payments and information like that trace every single expense that is leaving your account i think that's really important like i remember one time i was paying for a subscription for about the whole year and i never used the website i just like created an account and it was only it was only until a year later i realized i was paying for i was paying subscription for a whole year and i never used it so make sure you're tracking all those expenses you see in your account so the last strategy i'll be using moving forward is to schedule time to, to track my um, spending and this is something i'm currently doing and i will continue to do but i realized that once you like create a time slot in your calendar to track your expenses it will actually get done because most of the time you're like oh yeah i'll track my expenses but like time just flies and you never actually get it done so i have time slots where i track my expenses every week so it's usually every thursday and every sunday and when i have when i know that okay this is thursday, thursday is coming up i'm tracking my expenses then i can see like all my purchases for prior week and i've even been able to track some expenses that were inaccurate and rectif and like correct them like i saw one time i went to best buy and they overcharged me because i tracked my expenses i was able to catch that on time so that's why i think it's really important to schedule our time to track your expenses so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video of me being more transparent about my spending and looking back i don't regret any particular like I don't re regret um, the way I've spent my money. I'm just excited for more opportunities to save money like moving forward. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like this video and comment something you've learned or share something that has been working for you and has helped you to save money. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.